it led to you attempting to take your own life it led to periods of depression it led to panic attacks when you were playing although you couldn't tell people what was going on you couldn't say I'm having a panic attack so what did you do to, to cover that up I don't know really I don't know <laughs> I, I even think now how I, how I sort of kept it to myself mm. can you, you just describe what a panic attack is when you're in the middle of a, a game and this is your job what what was happening to you I, I, I'll, the first panic attack I had uh, I was just going to Tesco right. for a loaf of bread it was just after Neil Warnock had said that you know potentially he was going to Sheffield United I was so excited about that and he you wanted know. to take you with him yeah absolutely and it was my dream to to you know just get higher and higher and you know I loved it at Bury and all of a sudden on a Sunday night I went to Tesco I went straight through the door and all this rush of adrenaline went straight through my body mm. my heart was racing I was sweating I thought I was gonna die and I, somehow I got home, I went to hospital, professional football or what's going on with my body. Uh, it was, I guess, a form of grooming then, but I wouldn't know yeah. at 11 what grooming was. And we asked if we wanted to drive the car. Um, it started from touching yeah. and then um, developed more and more with the... Uh, with sexual abuse yeah. and and the threats of, of, of violence towards your family, really. If yeah. you were to to bring the word to anybody, yeah, I believe he said he was going to kill your brothers and yeah, kill he kill you. Yeah, threatened them. both my uh, both my brothers uh, to me and my two parents. And of course, you were saying all those years you were playing at the top level. You talked about Paul Gascoigne and. Lineker and all these huge household names at the time, John Bonds when you were at Liverpool, uh, even as you were enjoying the, that great success you were dealing with it and had suicidal thoughts as a result of it? Yes, well, uh, in truth yes, I mean uh, in football there are lots of highs and lows uh, which you deal with uh, as part of the game but I dealt with this uh, inwardly alongside that um, it took me some years to talk to my family about it, me and my wife, and um, yeah, I struggled and still struggle to this day uh, with, with the issues. Um, I'm lucky that I've got a, a strong family mm. unit around me mm. uh, because you know I don't really know when it, whether I would have been around today. The most difficult thing throughout is the fact that I was unable and, and was void of all emotions whatsoever. Um, I still struggle with that today. Um, my family just, they seem to just accept it, mm. which I don't feel is fair on mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. uh, to some extent, but I'm lucky that they've, they've stuck by me. Yeah. And, you know, they almost say it's just dad, yeah. but at least with this story, um, they may be, be yeah. able to understand as well yeah. um, some of the repercussions of what happened to me and yeah. why, why I've, I've been how I've been yeah. and how I am with them as, uh, as my children and my family. I haven't spoke in this in depth as much as I've spoken to yourself uh, regarding this. Um, since Friday, the emotions have been like a roller coaster yeah. with myself um, coming forward. Um, I don't know moving forward whether it is going to be a help to me or no. not, but one thing for sure was that I knew that I had to tell yeah. my story and the truth yeah. uh, about what happened to me um, as a youngster. Uh, in the hope that it will either prevent anybody else yeah. trying to do this, and and also, you know, if, it, if it's just one person off, or if six, seven, eight people come forward and, yeah. and, and, and it's happened to them and it helps them, then I believe it's been worthwhile.